What's going on gamers, it's Phil H here from Beneath the Veil and welcome back to the channel. We've actually made this video once already, but then 7.36 was released and changed everything. Today we wanted to go over how Mantis Style works, as well as cover off the difference between Mantis Style Illusions and the illusions you gain through Illusion Runes. We'll discuss the general rules of illusions in terms of how their damage works, but we'll do a separate video going through every hero who creates illusions of their own and cover off how their innates and facets impact their illusions. As of 7.36b, Manta Style currently costs 4,650 gold and is made up of Yasha, a diadem, and a 1,550 gold recipe. When combined, it passively grants agility heroes 26 base damage, intelligence and strength heroes gain 10 base damage, while the universal heroes gain a massive 32.2 base damage. All heroes additionally gain 4.34 armor, 41 attack speed, 120 max mana, 0.5 mana regen, 1% base magic resistance, 220 max HP, 1 HP regeneration, and a 10% movement speed bonus. Manta Style is mainly known for its active effect, Mirror Image. Annoyingly, the same name given to Nagas Iron's first ability. Thank you, Gaben. When activated, you spend 125 mana in order to create two illusions of your hero which last for 20 seconds. At the initial point of activation, your hero is banished for a tenth of a second during which a basic dispel is also applied to your hero. The illusions created deal 33% of your hero's base damage if you're a melee hero and 28% of your base damage if you're a ranged hero. They also receive 300% of the normal damage your hero would receive, so they are overall significantly weaker than your main hero. The cooldown of the mirror image active is 34 seconds, so the effect has an overall uptime just shy of 59%, being completely inactive for 14 seconds. Due to the 0.1 seconds of banishment, mirror image with some practice can be utilized to disjoint many projectile effects as well as dodge single instance spells and AoE abilities on top of dispelling many silencing and rooting effects after they're applied. For those wanting to practice this skill, do make sure to check out the training polygon in the arcade in order to practice this skill specifically. The illusions created through this spell are considered basic illusions, which as we covered in our hex video means they will be immediately destroyed if hexed. For those interested, there is a particular counterplay to immediately know which unit is the real hero if they activate Manta Style and Vision of you. Instead of staring directly at the hero, watch a spot on the ground very close to them. When they activate Manta Style, there will be a brief window where one unit appears before the other two. If you catch it, you'll know that's the real hero. For this reason, as you gain MMR, you'll need to start activating Manta Style from Fog if you want to make full use out of the illusions rather than the dispel, as better players are able to identify which unit is the real hero and punish you for it. This goes for illusion runes as well, so if you want to up your game you can practice identifying which unit is the real hero in a demo lobby. Simply spawn in an enemy hero, give them a manta style, and then shift Q movements, and then shift Q the activation of the manta style. From that point you can select your main hero, we would suggest lion or shadow shaman, and then using free spells you can quickly try and hex the other two illusions and leave the main hero, or just try and hex the main hero straight off. Doing this practice for 5 to 10 minutes, anywhere between 1 to 3 times a day, can radically improve your speed at identifying where the real hero is. When activating an illusion room from a bottle, it behaves the exact same way that activating Manta Style does. It provides a small duration banish allowing you to dodge projectiles, single instance spells or AoE effects, and it also provides a basic dispel. An illusion rune creates two basic illusions which deal 35% of your base damage for both melee and ranged heroes. However, they take 200% damage if you're a melee hero or 300% damage if you're a ranged hero. So for melee heroes, these illusions are more durable than Manta style illusions, but for ranged heroes, these illusions deal slightly more damage. These illusions are indistinguishable from an enemy point of view and last a whopping 75 seconds by comparison. So they can get a lot more work done for you if leveraged well and you let them survive the full duration. Before looking at item synergies, we need to first discuss the universal mechanics of illusion units. This is a non-exhaustive list of the qualities which illusion units duplicate based off the hero they're created from. Illusions copy all attributes, health, mana and their regeneration values, base attack damage, attack speed, attack range and projectile speed, base armor and base magic resistance, status resistance and slow resistance, spell damage amplification, evasion, vision and any talents, item effects, passive abilities, auras, innate abilities and facets that provide any of the above. Do note that in general, illusions only copy base attack damage rather than total attack damage. This is incredibly important. Illusions will display the additional damage number they would have based on items and auras, but will only ever deal damage based on a percentage of their base damage number. 
Illusions also copy the toggled on or off status of items such as Radiance and some abilities such as Lycan Shapeshift. Attack modifiers and other on-hit effects such as Lifesteal, Mana Break, Abaddon's Curse of Avernus and Luna's Moonglaives are also copied, but may not be as effective as their main hero counterpart due to reduced damage amounts from the illusions themselves. Illusions will also bestow any auras to your team that you would not normally have access to, such as Luna's Lunar Blessing or Beastmaster's Inner Beast, but may not directly benefit from those auras themselves. Critical strikes are also sometimes copied, but we'll touch on that in a moment. We'll leave more details in a pinned series of comments detailing all the item, hero skills, auras, facets, and innates, which illusions will bestow even if they don't directly benefit from the bonuses themselves. There's lots of good information to know when leveraging the power of illusions for those of you who want to learn all the gritty details. With all that out of the way, let's discuss items which synergize with illusions and make them stronger. Due to illusions generally only gaining damage through base damage increases, you need to look to attribute gaining items in order to make your illusions hit harder. This makes a lot of conventional damage items such as Desolator nowhere near as useful for heroes leveraging illusions as the illusions created don't get any of the benefit from that damage gain. Similarly, scaling up in strength attribute items aids in making illusions meatier since you get HP and HP regen with each point of strength. Those straight HP and HP regen items also translate to illusions. For physical damage resistance, you need to look to agility gain to raise base armor as illusions don't get the benefits of direct armor gaining items. However, armor auras such as Assault Curus and even Buckler will benefit illusions. Since mana gain and regeneration items also translate to illusions, scaling through intelligence isn't as important. However, the only way to scale your illusions magic resistance is to increase their base magic resistance which is only done through intelligence. Though illusions can benefit from the active magic barrier effects of items like Pipe of Insight. If you're finding this video helpful along with the other videos on our channel, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. It's a small gesture that costs you nothing but helps us immensely. Thank you to the over 5,000 of you that have joined our community already, and those of you who haven't yet, thank you in advance for taking a moment to consider doing so. Let's get back to it. If you're playing one of the myriad of agility heroes who make use of illusions and usually enjoy purchasing Manta style as well, or you're playing into agility heroes and have the ability to make illusions of them, keep your eye out for Eye of Skadi, which gives 22 base damage, Swift Blink and Eagle Song, which give 25, as well as Butterfly, which gives 35, along with Evasion, which spreads to illusions. The highest source of agility gain in the game is Diffusal Blade's upgrade Disperser, which gives a massive 40 base damage to agility heroes, so you may want to consider that too, as the mana break spreading to illusions is not only great, but the active effect of Disperser is another source of a basic dispel if you're an agility based hero wielding the item. Though there aren't any intelligence heroes currently who really enjoy buying Manta style, get wrecked Zeus, it's important for heroes who make illusions of their enemies to consider that high intelligence items will enable their illusions to hit high. Harder. When making illusions of intelligence heroes, the highest int gain items to keep an eye out for are Meteor Hammer and Glepnir, which give 24 base damage, Arcane Blink and Mystic Staff, which give 25, Scythe of Vice, which gives 30, Wind Waker, which gives 35, and Parasma, which caps out at 40 base damage. Heroes like Outworld Destroyer and Puck can end up doing a lot of damage to their own team if you make illusions out of them in late game situations. For Chaos Knight and other strength heroes, which you may want to make illusions of, getting a Heart of Tarask into your inventory or seeing one in your enemy's inventory is a huge green flag that illusions of that hero are going to output a lot of damage, as the base damage of 40 is leagues ahead of every other item option without even considering the HP regen that Heart of Tarask provides. Other items to look out for are Eye of Skadi, which provides 22 base damage, Overwhelming Blink, Reaver, Satanic, and Harpoon, which provide 25 base damage, as well as Armlet of Mordigian, which in its active unholy strength form also provides 25 base damage. Additionally, when creating illusions, they gain additional HP if Armlet is active. For universal heroes, any combination of Yasha, Kaya, and Sanj will give 22.4 base damage, Wind Waker and Butterfly give 24.5, Meteor Hammer gives 25.2 damage, Parasma and Heart of Tarask give 28, a Nyx Assassin with a Dagon 5 will give you 31.5 damage, as will any universal hero with an ultimate orb or harpoon. Manta Style gives 32.2 damage, Lincoln Sphere gives 33.6, Disperser and Hurricane Pike give 35, Helm of the Overlord gives 44.1 damage, and Eye of Skadi tops the list for universal heroes at 46.2 base damage. As you can see, making illusions of universal heroes is consistently pretty impactful as there's so many high base damage increasing items for them. 
When it comes to critical strikes, illusions will technically crit on non-guaranteed critical strike abilities and items, but the amount of damage they actually deal is reduced due to their lower damage. For the sake of not giving away which illusion is the real hero, all illusions will display a full crit value in text, the actual damage applied to the hero will be in line with their actual damage number. In general, there's more effective ways to deal damage with illusions, and critical strike items aren't looked to as a viable option in the majority of games. When needing to pierce high armor lineups though, it can be a valuable consideration. As mentioned earlier, check the pinned comments for a breakdown of which critical strikes can be triggered by illusions if interested. When looking at items which generally make life hard for illusion heroes, there's a few items to discuss. Firstly, as we covered at the end of our video on hexes, Scythe of Ice and other abilities which hex, as well as Lion's Mana Drain, all instantly destroy basic illusions which definitely makes life more difficult for most illusion heroes. Especially if their illusions normally get instantly destroyed, if their real hero gets turned into a critter suddenly the jig is up, and the entire enemy team is pouring damage into your actual hero. If the illusions the hero creates are strong illusions, these illusions will in most cases still be hexed but not instantly destroyed. We'll go over this in more detail in our video specifically about illusions produced by hero skills. The more common defensive itemization route which makes life hard for illusion heroes is Crimson Guard. It was given a little bit of love in 7.36b, and it's starting to see more use now than it was towards the tail end of the previous patch cycle. It's also winning a fair bit, which is nice. The active ability, called Guard, completely gimps illusion heroes in the earlier stages of the game, and significantly hinders illusion heroes' impact heading into the mid-game, giving opportunities to force team fights and end games before the illusion heroes in question can mount a reasonable defense with multiple larger items. Since illusion heroes rely on a lot of units hitting you for smaller amounts of damage, blocking a significant portion of all of those attacks coming in, while they still have low amounts of base damage, makes what would otherwise be half decent strikes feel more akin to being bludgeoned by an army of pool noodles. Crimson Guard used to be what we refer to as a tempo item, requiring you to group up early and end the game before illusion heroes could mount a reasonable defense. These days, the damage block being calculated based on the unit's max health makes it a much more reliable late game item as well. Your only real counterplay these days against Crimson Guard is to use some sort of purge effect such as Nullifier to remove the Crimson Guard active from the unit that you need to kill. Do keep in mind that the wielder of the Crimson Guard does still have access to the passive damage block which grants a 60% chance to block 75 damage from incoming attacks on melee heroes and 50 damage on ranged. The other itemization route that is looked to in order to deal to illusion heroes is wearing down the ways of illusions in the main hero through Radiance Burn as well as other heavy damage over time spells like Darkseer's Iron Shell, Warlock's Upheaval when he has the Shard upgrade, as well as Shiva's Guard which deals additional damage to all illusions on cast. Since illusion heroes aren't great with resisting magic damage, this can be really rough on a lot of illusion heroes and heroes like Phantom Lancer and Naga Siren sometimes resort to an Eternal Shroud in order to try and sustain through the burn despite the passive effect not working on their illusions. As Eternal Shroud has received more and more nerfs over the course of patch 7.36, it's worth consulting sites like Dota 2 Pro Tracker to see how high ranked illusion players are adapting to this weakness in their hero's toolkit over the course of each patch cycle. The evasion aspect of Radiance is also an irritant for illusion heroes, and it's a nice time to discuss how to deal with heroes who either have innate evasion like Phantom Assassin, Brewmaster, and Windranger, or those who like to purchase evasion through Radiance, Butterfly, and Heaven's Halberd. While illusions do gain the 45 attack speed, as well as the 80% chance to pierce through evasion to deal 70 bonus magical damage with Monkey King Bar, they don't get any benefit from the 40 damage that the item provides. Bloodthorn, however, is a much more elegant solution where during the 5 second duration of the Soul Rend active, all attacks on the silenced target deal an extra 50 magical damage per strike and they all have true strike. At the end of the 5 second duration, 60% of all damage taken during the silence will then be dealt as magical damage, which is often a huge additional burst in later game situations. Illusions still gain full access to the passive pierce, which gives 40% chance to pierce evasion and deal 60 magical damage, so a weaker version of MKB's whole shtick. Since the illusions only lose out on 10 damage and get 100 attack speed instead along with the HP and mana regen, it's a much better itemization choice when needed. You do have to be wary of dispels though, so in games where the enemy have multiple dispels to cleanse the soul rend active, MKB may be your best solution in hedging your bets to get damage through. We hope this video has given you some valuable insight into how Manta style and illusions in general work in Dota 2. Stay tuned to our follow up video discussing all the hero skills which create illusions and how they differ. If there's anything you think we missed or you have any questions, please as always leave them in the comments below and I or a member of the team will get back to you as soon as we can. Good luck and happy gaming.